Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm excited, delighted to be with you guys as always. Listen, we got an awesome show lined up. We're going to be discussing all things spiritual. My friend has an amazing story. If you guys have not heard it yet, you are in for a treat. Buckle up. We're going to be, we're going to be getting deep. We're going to be getting really deep. And listen, we're going to tie it into, again, spirituality, the dark side, the light side, the two... Uh, polarities that are at war in the existence of those those realms and trust me it's going to be good if anybody has any questions or comments make sure you post them there in the chat and i'll be keeping an eye on the chat for um uh, my guest today and myself and my my producer richie richie will be checking them out too so i think we're streaming on instagram right now as well so shout out to those people watching shout out to people watching on youtube periscope twitter wherever you are man excited to be with you guys I uh, can't go any further without saying a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, all of our partners who help uh, make this podcast and my music and everything that I bring to the table possible. I got to read a couple of names really quick. Some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Von Lee Flowers. Thank you for coming on, Von Lee Flowers. You're awesome. Matt Hubler. Thank you, Matt. Amanda V. Welcome to the team, Amanda. Saloma Bowman. What's up, Saloma? Uh, it was awesome meeting you on the uh, uh, Children of the Breath, the breath work session that we did. Let's see who else we got here. Shaloa. 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 I think I pronounced that right. Uh, Brian Morse. Thank you for coming on, Brian. And last but not least, least Brant Bangerman. Brant Bangman. Benjamin, I have no idea. I know I butchered your name, man. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for coming on and believing in the work. If you'd like to support, go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music. It's uh, 200 plus songs. It's probably at the 300 mark now. I just need to count. Uh, you get access to my guided meditations and uh, special behind the scenes stuff. Make sure you go check it out. But also just to be straight up with you. The med- meditations are free. I just made those free to everybody. And so they're they're free. And uh, but, you know, you're encouraged to give They're uh, donation based. But if you can't give, make sure you download them anyway. It's uh, something that's, uh, you know, too good to, to hide behind a paywall. And I wanted to get that out there to the people. So make sure you check out the throne room encounter. Hands down is such a such a beautiful experience to, to go into the throne room of God and also the encountering Jesus the hem of his garment. So those meditations are um, done to to bring you into encounter with the Lord. And um, I've hired voice actors. So as you meet people on that journey and stuff, um, there's people that come up and greet you. So it's not just me leading it, but there's sound effects and there's all kinds. It's fully immersive. 
if you've never experienced anything like it. So make sure you download those and they're free. You can go to truthseeker.com or look into the description of any of these videos or podcasts and you better get those. So um, we just put out a new video, the video with myself in Illuminati Congo. It is on my YouTube. For those of you who have not seen it, make sure you go check out the new music video that just came out and uh, was done uh, really good. My friend Matt Hatchett, uh, he's on Instagram. He's linked there. He shot the video and it came out amazing. We're, we're coming off of our retreat to uh, the re Reset, Refresh and Renew retreat this past weekend. And it was it was great. My friend Congo came down and it was good to build with him in the spirit and, uh, and meet in the flesh, man. You know, we've been working together for years. And so this was a, our chance to meet in person and had a great time working on music and him being here in the studio and and uh, yeah, just going in through through prayer and meditation and breath work. So good, so good, so good. And hopefully you guys will get to see the fruits of that here in the upcoming weeks. So guys, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into today's discussion. My guest today is Miss Annie Lobear with hookersforjesus.com. Annie, welcome to the podcast, my friend. How are you? How are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. How's it going over there? Great. Good to have you, my friend. Early in the morning, your time. I'm excited. You got me out of bed early, okay? This is this is like a miracle in the making. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And for good reason. We're going to cover your story and, and we're going to explore a little bit together. So I'm familiar with you. I... Um, I remember seeing you on like TBN and Praise the Lord and Joyce Myers back in the day. Uh, I came came back to the Lord in uh, two, September 7th of 2000. And so I could that's the only channel I would watch was TBN. And we'd see you we'd see you pop on there and, and your your brand and your staple is has been your hair. And it's you know, so you stand out amongst the crowd. So I've been seeing your face and, and, and hearing your story for years. So. Um, excited to uh, to share your story with my audience here and and pick your brain a little bit. So, if you just kind of want to start with that, just kind of like how you got started, your testimony, and maybe talk about those early days of of, of TVN. Uh, once we do that, yeah, you know what? It's so cool when you are willing to share what's happened to you. What doors can open up? I don't know mm. who I'm talking to out there. Me, but You're talking to me. Listen, listen, there is there is a special power and, and vibe and anointing that happens when you're willing to get real with people and share what happened to you. Now, back in the day, you know, I was trafficked for um, probably about 10 years. And then I got back into being trafficked again later. So off and on for about 16 years. And if no one understands what trafficking is, it's human trafficking is this. It's anytime someone is using force, fraud, or coercion against the human being for their own personal exploiting. My particular type of human trafficking was sex trafficking. I am from Minnesota, so Minnesota has, yes, traffickers. And just to let everyone know that's watching and listening right now, there are traffickers everywhere you go. You cannot escape it. It's in every city, county, town. Now, again, if you're in the mountains and you're living there on the mountain by yourself, there might not be a trafficker out there. But if there's people around, trafficking happens. So I ended up as a little girl just not feeling loved. And I grew up in a home where my dad was very strict and he was hitting my mom in front of me. Rest my dad's soul. He's in heaven right now. But at the time, I had this just desire to just be known and be loved. And my father and I did not have a great relationship. He was very abusive. He had so many issues. And what I didn't realize at the time, Truth, was the fact that he had complex trauma. Now, there were no words for it back then in the 70s and 80s, but my dad was very disturbed. My grandfather was very abusive when he was a little boy, was home only half the time, drove and worked for, this is what my dad told me, this is crazy, in Chicago, okay? worked for he was like driving giving people rides from the speakeasy and doing transport supposedly for the mafia okay mm -hmm. my dad was obsessed with watching mafia shows it's like 
he loved the Godfather. So now I understand why, as I as I look back and I realize what's happened actually with my um, my past and, and what happened me to me as a little girl. Because when you see that, when you look back and you you realize, you know, I picked this and I chose this and I did this because of the certain like spiritual dynamics that were happening in my family. And see, my father was raised in church. Do you know way back, and I found this out probably a couple years ago, but way back on my father's side, there was a pastor, you know, a missionary that was in South America. In fact, I just found this out a couple months ago that I had a relative that was born in South America that was born there out of missionary work, which is really crazy, right? Wow. Brazil. Hmm. I, I just love it because I've never been there. And we know that there's a super powerful that, that is, you know, there's people that are just in the occult there, but they're hmm. also, you know, having supernatural experiences and, and, you know, God is just showing up and yeah. showing off. So I That's feel awesome. like there's like this, it's so cool. So anyway, I'm just going to fast forward because my story, honestly, you guys could go on forever. Honestly, because I have this book that I wrote called Fallen Out of the Sex Industry and Into the Arms of the Savior. And if y'all want to pick it up, go to our website, hookersforjesus.net or pinkchair.com, and you can pick it up. So I ended up as a teenager just becoming very, very rebellious. And I was totally into pop culture. Pop culture was my God. Now, this is for real. Like, I wanted to be like Madonna because Madonna had just came out. Prince was like, top of the charts, Michael Jackson. I was into Boy George, just like the music scene was my thing. But not only that, I loved looking at glamour magazines, Cosmo, Vogue, you know, everything that had to do with makeup, fashion, very drawn to that. In fact, if there was social media back then, this girl would have been all over that. I would have been just the first person that started doing it. I'm, I'm just saying, like, our social media back then was no social media. We had a TV to look at, you know, a telephone. You know, back then, cell phones were about this big. They had just gotten invented. So there was really no way to communicate to the public. And when I was a teen, I dressed like the musicians. I wore lace. I, like, I wore purple a lot because I love prints. And I ended up graduating high school very embittered because I broke up with this boy in high school that I gave my virginity to. Now, listen, I was going to church growing up, but it, as a, as a later teenage in my later teenage years, I totally forsook all that belief system. And I was like, kind of like an agnostic slash atheist part-time. Right. I just didn't believe in anything because I didn't see, you know, the results of what I learned in Sunday school come to fruition. I've never read it. I was fully stuff but i want to current life situation which is i just need to make it and i was because i was living in wisconsin at the time i got three jobs so of course when you have three jobs you're working literally 60 to 80 hours a week like that's just what, the way it is i wanted to have my own apartment my own car my mom and dad didn't have a lot of money i wanted to go to college so i started just working these jobs just hustling my way through and one night my girlfriend and i we were still teenagers we went to the nightclub the drinking age was 21. I had a fake ID, walked in, and these guys bought us drinks and Long Island iced teas because guess what? That was the drink back in the day. And I'm telling you, if you, you had one of those, you were just off the count. But I was a person that could drink a little bit. Like I had practiced in high school, smoked a little pot, so I kind of like had this level in my body where if I had a big drink, it didn't really matter. I didn't get totally wasted. So these guys bought us drinks and they were traffickers. <laughs> and I have no clue. Like, of course, you know, you would be suspicious if someone walked in to a nightclub wearing sunglasses, beautiful outfits on, like head to toe, dressed like the nines, like Armani boss suits, right? Furs, truth, furs. Like, why wasn't I suspicious? Because listen, no one teaches anyone actually back then. Oh, hey, 
this is what a trafficker looks like. This is what they might say to you. This is how they might act. This is what they might do. Yeah. They bought us drinks. The guy that was talking to me, I was like, he's not good looking. But my girlfriend starts dating the guy that starts talking to her. We leave the nightclub. You know, there's, you know, numbers exchanged. I was not interested in the guy that was speaking to me, but the man my girlfriend went with, he was so smooth with his words and charismatic and he started buying her things he gave her the to his drop top mercedes benz pearl white white leather on the interior he had the symbols and the rims dipped in gold okay like back then 24k was what it was okay and so my girlfriend was completely enamored by him and she said, hey, girl, I'm in Hawaii. He had flown her to Hawaii because this man had houses all over the country. This is what they call circuit pimping, where the, you have stable. And a stable is this. It's a group of people that are working for you. If you're a trafficker, getting all your money. And the, it's the people you have a relationship with. So at this time, this man had a bunch of women. You know, I don't even know if he had underage women or not, but I should say little girls. But he had her and he brought her to Hawaii and his best friend's girl turned her out. Turning out is when you show someone how to sell themselves in prostitution. And I might as well just add to it sex trafficking because anytime someone is forced, anytime someone's coerced or tricked or manipulated into that lifestyle, it is sex trafficking. So she starts working. She's getting glamorized by it. Like she's getting her Louis Vuittons and beautiful clothing and she's fascinated because she didn't have a dad growing up single mom single parent and her and I had a lot in common we were just angry at our fathers hers for not being there me you know for having my father there but him not being present emotionally and him being abusive so we were like two peas in a pod together as BFFs and she calls me up and says girl you got to come to Hawaii because I'm making more money than I can, I, I, that I've ever seen. Like it was crazy. And in fact, Japan was doing really well with their economy. And in Hawaii at the time, the Japanese tourists would come over and they would spend thousands of dollars, thousands. And so the men that she would see would all be Japanese. So she learned how to speak Japanese. When I flew there that night, our first trick we both turned i mean for with me uh, it's called a double we had to speak japanese so i let her talk but i learned how to speak japanese that night and how to solicit a japanese client and in modern day terms we call us on tricks buyers marks and so that night i turned my first trick for 500 and Listen, in the 80s, 500 bucks is a thousand and maybe a little more because of the inflation recently. Maybe it's 1500 now yeah. <laughs> for one five minute, five minutes. OK, listen, I didn't even touch the guy. That's how easy it was. I literally walked out of that with that money and I was like, holler at me right now. I got my money that I need. And I'm telling you, I got corrupted. No plan in the, in the beginning. Now, a lot of people would criticize, you know, and, but also do, do people realize that there's a lack of love in our hearts and a big black hole? There was a void in my heart that needed to be filled. And if I could fill it with money to get the clothes that I wanted, and I didn't have nice designer clothes growing up. I didn't have anything really nice growing up. Had a lot of hand-me-downs. If I could get the nice car that I wanted, I could buy my own house and start my own business, go to music school. I wanted to go to college, man. I thought I was going to make it. So that was my God. Money became my God. And I left, I left Hawaii after two weeks because I took a vacation, came back to work, worked a, probably a couple more weeks, put my notice in, told my, all my jobs, Hey, I'm quitting. I'm going to start the escort services. And I didn't tell him what I was going to do, but one of my supervisors, Julie Leone, I'll never forget her because she worked for IDS financial, which is Investors Diversified Services, which is modern day American Express today. She's like, I need you to come in my office. And I was like, for what? She's like, well, I, I know you're quitting. But I heard 
that you're selling yourself. And I, I basically, if I didn't use swear words, I cussed her out with my sassiness. And basically, I told her, you're a liar. I am not selling myself. Who told you this? And I walked out insulted. But honestly, truth, that woman was calling me to the truth, okay? Mm. She was. Strong Catholic woman. She was, she was pretending crying after I talked to her. Like I heard her feelings, but I was not having it, you know? And I ended up working the escort services in Minnesota. Now I worked for a couple, they were a pimp couple and I had no clue. They wow. were traffickers. They took an agency fee from me. They never took my tips. So I was like, I didn't realize, see, anytime someone lives off the earning of someone that's being sold, you're a trafficker you know if selling sex is illegal and you're living off the earnings of a prostitute you are a trafficker you can be charged with pimping pandering slash sex trafficking so i'll just say it bruce and maggie that was their real names i'm not sure maybe that was their stage names bruce would meet me and i would do my drops and i was turning tricks left and right like in beautiful you know where the like, now now it, you know the what is it called the mall of america wasn't even built yet but i think they were starting to build it and i was going on calls on the 494 and downtown minneapolis downtown st paul and then i was going to beautiful homes in anoka in, in minnesota richfield in edina and just making some money but the money was, wasn't like hawaii and I was a little jaded by that because I was like, Minnesota people are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> These people don't understand. I mean, I'm worth a lot of money, okay? And a man pulled a machete on me and a man pulled a shotgun on me within like a, uh, probably a week or two. I, it freaked me out. I quit. I started working at the, S the dance services, which I started working for Party Time, which was a famous company in Minnesota. They would book you to 10, 15, 20 different clubs. Um, you'd work three clubs a day in the area that was one which is now today on hennepin avenue it's called the spearmint rhino it was back then called the skyway lounge and there was a catwalk that you would walk out on and dance for all the patrons you know that are watching and so this man walked in and man I, he was like fine to me he was good looking very attracted to him what I didn't know about this man was he was an undercover pimp and I got into a relationship with him. He would, he tipped me all this, this money the first night I met him. And I was like, Whoa, this guy's got money. He was a drug dealer and I didn't like it. I was against drug dealing. You know, I, I actually did some deals with him and did some drops for him actually. So, you know, I was a dealer for a second too. Like, I mean, I just did whatever it took yeah. to make someone happy and be loved. Mm. But, the revealing of his trafficking nature didn't come into full play. He had a bunch of pimp friends. I didn't really pay attention to it. I was like, I told him, I said, look, I am not a girl that's going to be pimped. I can't stand me a pimp. Pimp needs to get his own money. Okay. And I watched the police pull him over. I watched the police mistreat him, not knowing of his terrible record that he had, by the way, attempted murder. Okay. With a very violent record he had probably since he was a teenager growing up, just in and out of jail. And I brought this man with me to Las Vegas because that same girlfriend that was in Hawaii went to Las Vegas with her boyfriend. He had a house here that he owned and brought her to Las Vegas to work the escort services. Now, if anyone is going to work as an escort, Vegas back then was the place in the 80s and 90s it was the town it was the place where you would make a thousand two thousand three thousand five thousand ten thousand dollars a call like money was here out of any place this is the place where the most pimps were and did you know and the most working girls were did you know that we are right now per capita the highest place where people are sold for sex when it comes to trafficking in the country we are ground zero per capita we might not have the largest population of people but as it's a concentrated 
population of people that are being trafficked. Las Vegas is the place. It still is to this day. And yes, I brought that boyfriend with me to the lovely bright lights of Sin City. Man, let me tell you, when I first got here, I was enamored by the lights. Woo, man, those lights, I saw them. I saw the neon and the lights blinking and I was like, something is going on here. There was an energy. Man, when I still go down to the strip tooth, there's an energy. Mm. There's an energy of money, glamour, you know, all things are possible type of energy. Mm. Like I can do, I can become an entrepreneur. I can make it, you know, it's like this energy. I can't explain it. It's electric. And so the first night that I brought my boyfriend here was the first night that I found out that he was a undercover trafficker and he beat me down to the point where I was unrecognizable. Mm. In fact, I have like 30 cameras that I've never developed. You know, those survey cameras. Yeah. Yeah. I took pictures of my whole life during that time. There's probably about 20 of them in the lifestyle that I've never developed. And I'm wondering how many pictures do I have of myself and being beat up? I know I have because I, I had one camera that I developed with black eyes and a choke cold on my throat. But let me tell you, you know, people, some of you out there that are curious about the sex industry, you have maybe friends that are in the sex industry. It is a type of industry that gets you in. It's literally like a whirlpool, like a tornado, like a hurricane, like quicksand. Once it sucks you into the vortex, it is very, very difficult to get out. Mm. And oh. I was with this trafficker. Go ahead, Truth. No, I was. I want to. I got some. I got so many questions for you. I got so many questions for you. Like, how did you? How did you get out of it? Like, what was the turning point? Like, you're getting beat up, and like, how hard is it to work after you've gotten beat up? Like, do are you out for, you know, out <laughs> of work for a okay. week, or are you cake on uh, makeup? How does that work? Okay, you cake on makeup, but you do have to recover from all the swelling. So you have to wait for the swelling to go down and then you bust out your Dermablend and your makeup. Back then it was Max Factor Dermablend that I had. And I would cover up my, my bruises on my neck and my face and my body because you hit me on my body as well. So it's, it just sounds so insane that somebody would, would stay. But there's something called trauma bond that happens, yeah. and it's very, very akin to the Stockholm Syndrome, mm -hmm. which is where your captor, your kidnapper, your abuser hold you captive and get you to believe that they care about you, even though they beat you. I know this sounds insane, and we can really, really see that model coming to fruition Back in the day in Minnesota, there's something called the Duluth uh, model of domestic violence. It's a wheel. It's a power wheel. But with trafficking, that same wheel can be applied because that's virtually what's happening. But you just add in the sex trafficking part and it becomes that power and control wheel. So I got out of the industry completely on August 2nd, 2003 from a, a massive overdose on cocaine. Praise God. <laughs> By the way, that wasn't the first overdose. I had overdosed four days prior on, on cocaine, rock cocaine, smoking Is that, it. Was that, was that, the, was that the, the drug of choice or was it any drugs, anything that you can, you can get your hands on? That was How my, was that at the end, yes. It, it wasn't every, every drug to get my hand on. My drug of choice back then was cocaine it was my main go-to because you could get high and get sober within 15 minutes. Hmm. You'd be like, to me, getting high on cocaine, I could still think clear, even though I was jittery and I was like all over the bounce and <laughs> bing, 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 yeah. bing, all over the place. That's what but they see, all say. You know, hey, I, I'm, I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm clear headed. Like. Yeah, I'm good, man. man I'm good. I got, I got this, man. I can think quick. Oh, I can get my house clean, whatever. I can do this math problem. I'm good. But my drug of choice was cocaine. Even though painkillers are narcotics, I'm allergic to cocaine and painkillers. It, it, it's so crazy that I was doing them. Okay. I don't like downers. Like uh, drinking wasn't my thing. It was part of it, but it wasn't my thing. Like I was never an alcoholic. Like I, I could put that stuff down and never touch it again. So, but the painkillers and the cocaine was so addictive. And I don't know if anyone's ever done cocaine. 
But if you've never done it, don't try it because once you try cocaine, it, 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 the first time you get high, it lasts like 10 hours. Like it's crazy. It does something to your dopamine, your serotonins in your brain that, that makes you believe that you're invincible. It makes you feel like you literally have superpower. Like that's the truth. Mm. So it made me feel, this is the honest truth. When you're in complex trauma and you've been abused mentally, emotionally, and physically, your brain dopamines are all like this. They're messed up. They're just crooked as all get out. And your serotonin levels are super low. You're depressed. You're full of anxiety. So when you do the cocaine, when mm -hmm. you do the painkillers, this is what happened to me. I felt normal. Yeah. Dude, I felt normal. I could function. You feel me? I could yep. function and I could do things and I could go on calls. What I mean by that is escort service calls. When men would call and purchase me, I could go on those calls and I could, I could feel like I had command of that room. So drugs were the, the, the experience that happened after the fact, the 10th or 11th years when I tried drugs, you know, I, I was with two traffickers. So one of my traffickers was in a show on the Las Vegas strip. He was a dancer. Yeah. It was mm. crazy. People uh, you would never <laughs> think, you know, it's like, Hey, I do this on the side too, or at least I'm a, I'm a figure it out kind of thing. You know, he, he didn't really know about, this lifestyle until he met me. And I actually, the second pimp, I actually told him, Hey, my traffickers after me. I didn't call him tracker. I called my pimp. Max pimps after me. If you go out to the nightclub with me, the shark nightclub, or we go out to the, you know, palladium nightclub. Cause that's where the nightclubs were hit back then. They don't even have them anymore. Mm. They have them in Las Vegas, but they're different nightclubs now. I, I would just tell him you need to like show up because then he, he's going to think I chose up with you that in the game that's calling choosing up. So okay. when you're with it, when you're with the pimp though, and I just want to make this clear, when you're with a trafficker, you have to break yourself. That means you have to give them everything that you make. You know, some pimps have special deals with people where they only give them charge 30% or 50 or 90 or 80. But it, the bottom line is this, eventually they're going to get all your money. And it's an abusive relationship because nobody just gonna give you drugs them. or something or. Well, you know, my, my ex, my first, my first ex trafficker was actually a cocaine addict, but he hid that from me very well. And he was sober most of our relationship. But towards the end, I started finding screens in his, his Armani suits. Like, mm. and now I know what those were. Those are screens for smoking cocaine. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And I, I didn't know it back then. I was like, what is this? Why does he have screens in his, in his uh, jacket? Like, this is weird. So honestly, getting on drugs was not my intention. I was totally against drugs, but I really believe that God used it because if I wouldn't have been on those drugs, I never would have overdosed. I never would have faced the end of my life and had my supernatural experiences. And again, experiences with the occult. Do you know that the first time my ex pimp choked me out, I was like coming to, he was choking me, had his hands around my neck, just choking me. And I opened my eyes and I literally truth saw his eyes and I saw a demon. It wasn't even him. Every time, like both my traffickers were choking me when they would get mad at me. They punched me, hit me, choke me. And, and that was one of their asphyxiations with me. They, they would choke me yeah. out to try to silence my voice. Mm. See, and I have a word for someone out there. The enemy wants to silence your voice. He wants to choke the truth out of you. And you cannot let him do that. You cannot let that demon get a hold of you like that. You have to speak your truth. And so the enemy wanted to choke me out and to kill me and asphyxiate my words. And I would open my eyes and I would literally see a devil and I would get sick to my stomach. And I didn't know my name. I didn't know who I was. I was in another realm. Like it was another, it was so dark. Truth. It was so dark. Like I... I felt like I was on the edge of prefaces of seeing Satan and all his demons lined up to torture me. It was crazy. Like if I didn't believe in the supernatural back then, that day it made me a believer. I was wow. like, oh my gosh. And so, you know, I, I in between, and, and I want everyone to hear me on this too. I was praying off and on like I was an atheist, but then I would get desperate, get in these moments of, 
man, I, is God real? Like, I can't believe I'm in this lifestyle. Can I get out of this lifestyle? And I remember getting out of the lifestyle that last day and never going back, but I had said a prayer. I read the Bible in Italy. I brought my Gideon Bible with me. Someone when I was 18 gave me a Gideon Bible, Bible. but I brought it with me and I read the New Testament fully for the first time and I cried. I cried. You know what? No, I cried. I weeped with remorse and regret. And then I knew that I, there was something in me that knew God was real. And so when I got back to the States after that trip to Italy, I was there for three months. I lived there for three months. I literally prayed and said, God, help me out of this lifestyle. And even though it didn't happen years, years, fast forward later, because that was like 1995, God was faithful because on August 2nd, 2003, I got out. The first two traffickers, I escaped the first one. He kidnapped me, put me in a trunk, cut all my hair off. The second one, my brother came with a shotgun and helped me move my stuff out of his house. Because when you leave a trafficker, you either have to sneak away or you have to be blazing with some guns because they will usually, okay, not saying all, but a lot of them, they're very sociopathic and they're thinking and psychopathic. They will not allow you to leave unhurt or murdered. That's just how it rolls. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, that's a sla- that scary. would that would be a slap in the face if you, you know, were a pimp and you owned someone or they were your property or you were making money off of them a day, like a lot of money, and then you see another guy, she left and goes to an, another pimp. It's like a rival faction, like a gang thing. Like right. now, now you're working for him. Okay, well, he shows up dead. You can't find him. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, right. I could, I could just see how you got to get out of there. Like there, it almost seems like you couldn't even work the same corner with another, another pimp or something. No. Right? Once you leave somebody, no, you no, no, you can't. Away. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. So I started working during the day at the escort services when I first left my first pimp because I knew that he was sleeping during the day because he was up all night. You know rounding up his girls mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know? And by the way, underage girls, underage truth. Okay. Girls that were under 18. Now, when I, when I first met him, I did not look my age. Like, dang, I looked like a 14, 15 year old. <laughs> I mean, I look good now. I'm just going to say it for my age. I look great. You look great. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Okay. I'm a grandma. I got three grandbabies. What? Okay, somebody, no. oh somebody my God. stop me Hold right on. now. Let's Hold go. On. What? Listen, hot grandma, let's go. Hot. There's no milk anymore. It's, it's about grandmas now, okay? <laughs> I heard that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a wild, yeah. wild so, ride. My so. life is like a movie, bro. Let's just keep it 100. It is still playing out like this movie. I, never I stop. Just, you know what? Ne- never stop, Man, I, right? That's right. I, I I see myself rolling with my little cane. I don't care if I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'm still, I'm never going to retire. I'm just not. I'm going to keep on working, okay? I'm not talking about hoeing up or sex industry. I now am a person that helps ladies and anyone that wants to get out away from their traffickers. And we have a nonprofit Hookers for Jesus. Yeah, I said it, hookers for Jesus. It means fish hook. Matthew 419 says, I will teach you how to fish for people. And I consider that fishing for people that are drowning in the dark, horrific, demonic waters of sex trafficking. Okay? We take our little boat. We go out there. Did you know that a Holland boat, a fishing boat, is called the hooker? Believe it or not. I found that out way later. I'm like, oh, yo, that's my boat right there. Yo, let's get in there and pick some people out of the water, okay? So that's what we do. And and when I overdosed, uh, of course, I didn't just, oh, I'm going to start this nonprofit. It was like this epiphany from God. I had this dream of Jesus. He literally came to me like, let me tell you, you guys, when you pray for something to happen, sometimes God is going to give you a supernatural surprise. I just, hey, supernatural. I'm speaking that over someone's life right now. Supernatural surprise. He gave me this dream. Jesus was, and it was really him. I totally believe that. He didn't look like any person I've ever seen on a picture, any movie, 
we're talking, this was supernatural. This was like the portals opened up of heaven, straight up. He had one blue eye, one green eye. I don't know. Jesus could appear the way he wants to to anybody, I think. But for me, he was drop dead gorgeous. He looked like an alien, like not of this world. Like he, he looked human, but he wasn't. He was like like a painted figure, like a 3D, like it was just like he was glowing. And uh, he came up to me. I was in New York City for some reason. It was nighttime. I was at a bus stop. And he walked up to me and he had on like this robe, you know, like something they would have worn a couple thousand years ago. And he just looked at me and I'm, let me tell you the truth. It was, it was so crazy. I looked in his eyes and I just wanted to talk to him. And he was just like looking at me with his eyes, his mouth stayed closed. And he started talking to me through his eyes, telling me telepathically what he thought of me. He was like, you're beautiful. I've loved you since the day I formed you you're my daughter, like you're my princess. And then he was like, at the very end, he was like, I want you to tell those ladies, you know, that I love them. The ones that are in the lifestyle that you used to be in. And I was like, whoa, whoa. Like I felt this love. Like it was like, oh my gosh. It's like, he filled me up with like, I, you know what? I, I don't want to even compare it to getting high because it was better than being high. Like I was in another plane and portal. Like I literally woke up and I, I didn't remember the dream right away, but I felt like this love and, and light and just like this overwhelming, like urge to just love everybody. It was so crazy. And when I realized I had that dream, I literally fell to the ground in thankfulness. Like, oh my gosh. And I believe that was the moment truth that God had called me and plucked me out of the, the brokenness and the complex trauma. And cause I had to heal. Like I, I was, God was still working with me. And I, I mean, I was like writing down everything that I had done wrong, burning it up and doing all these little rituals with mm -hmm. candles. And because I was kind of like an into Wiccan stuff back in the day. And yeah. I was really into vampires and I was like all about, you know, what, what if vampires are real, if we can live forever. <laughs> and you know that I want to yeah. talk to the vampires out there, yeah, yeah. people that are fascinated. Anne Rice was my favorite author to this day. That girl is a, that girl can write. Okay. She is the, a beautiful person. So her books got me through so much because I saw in her books that there was supernatural stuff going on. And she, she struggled. One of her books, she wrote about uh, Lestat fighting with God and fighting with Satan. And it was just so deep. And it was like, that, you know, he didn't feel like he could ever be forgiven for becoming a vampire. Like, and so I felt so relatable to Lestat because I was like literally going out at night, like truth. I was like a person that lived in a coffin and like, I lived like, I lived like that. Like I, my, my shades were blacked out. I never went outside when that sunset, it was on the game was on with me. Okay. And so Man, I just like, that was something to me, getting filled up with the love of, of, of Jesus. Like, you guys, if you've never thought Jesus was real, like, first of all, he was real. If you don't believe in him, that he's eternal. He was someone that really walked the earth, y'all. Okay. He's the only person that ever rose from the dead. Come on, somebody. And uh, so it was like, he became so real to me. And man, I, I just, oh gosh, I that feeling of, peace yeah. tranquility just in this 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 the, my whole body was just filled with tingles and my brain and it was like i saw okay i can't I, this is so crazy how to describe it but you have ever seen wizard of oz everyone knows the story of wizard of oz right in the movie we all know that she was in a black and white world everything was black and white but when she landed after that tornado took her house to the to oz she opened up that door all of a sudden 3d living color right your tornado That's took you to oz too oh man for real i'm married to oz let's <laughs> come on somebody like i can't okay that's a whole nother supernatural thing man let me tell you Ooh. okay so y'all listen <laughs> that that feeling was just yeah 
the it's, opposite, uh, okay. the opposite of the darkness, it, it, right? Gazing into the it, eyes it, it, of the demons and yeah, yeah, it was an encounter. Just like you talk about your meditations, it was an encounter that I'll never, ever, ever be able to describe. Mm. However, I know when I get to the other side, we all know there's an, another side, okay? When I open the door and I walk through that door, that whole experience is going to be magnified. We don't even know how many times, thousand, ten thousand, whatever it is. And I do know this is that if you seek God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, I'm telling you, God is going to show up in a form and that's going to be relatable to you. Yeah. It might not be the exact same experience as me, but hey, I would just pray on it. I would just be like, God, I want to see you. I want to see a super, I want to feel whatever it is. Okay. So I'm just encouraging anyone out there that never has felt the presence Mm -hmm. that it is attainable you just need to have the faith and persevere that's good just, yeah man it's real let me so uh i got so many questions for you anna your story is amazing um pick your brain on a lot of stuff that i, I got written down here um i want to ask you about this this is uh the new thing this is taking your power back as a sex oh, yeah. worker in a sense because like mm. so you're talking about you know 80s 90s right you had to kind of be out there on the street corner um you had to have somebody else doing the work for you and things like that um now in the digital realm these girls are you know the porn industry but not having to go sign up for a company like people doing their own thing there's a thing like a, it's pretty big obviously it was backpage.com yeah. backpage of was, course. was something of but course. but a lot of those now it's still, called bed, bed page is it bedpage.com mm -hmm. but at the same time i think a lot of those people still had pimps right there were still pimps that would protect and show Absolutely. up right with the girl but well, well I, let me ask you about right. this though the new I don't technology know about protect, by the way yeah okay the new technology. there you go yeah uh, the new cam, technology cam yes. girls Cam, like yep. girls are doing this from the privacy of their own home and yes. getting paid from home to do all types of degrading things. And, and, uh, you know, and it seems it's not as, it doesn't seem as scary or as risky and there's instant money. And what would you say to those girls are like, yeah, there's no, we don't, I don't have a pimp. I get all my money. It's instant. I don't even have to show up and see anybody. All this is digital. What would you say to those people who yeah, would, like, it's a new, new man. realm, you know? Would I, would I have loved that back in the day? Oh, if I could not leave my house. Oh my gosh. I totally. And now, first of all, everyone that's doing that, I totally see you and hear you. You, you got to make your money. I get that. However, what happens is the communication for social media and online sites is you're never going to be able to block every trafficker. So a lot of the times when you're in the sex industry, it becomes a really lonely space and you eventually will meet somebody that is interested in you that wants to be with you that sees you and and i'm talking about the dark side okay because the dark side is attracted to your disobedience let me let me say that again <laughs> the dark side's attracted to your disobedience if you know that the world doesn't accept what you're doing. Let's say your family doesn't, your friends, and they, you know, you're in the sex industry and you're selling yourself and you're on camera. Okay. And honestly, people have told you, you know what, you can do something better with your life. And you believe that all you are is your looks and your, your, you know, your, your sexiness on your body, because listen, that is temporary, by the way, it is eventually you're going to start uh, gaining weight <laughs> You're going to wrinkle, you're going to have a bulge in your stomach and you're not going to be as attractive. And so what happens is with the sex industry, even if you're a cam girl, eventually that beauty fades and see the traffickers will come and they'll start inboxing you. Oh, you're so beautiful. I wish I could be with someone like you. And you inherently like as us as human, we want connection and companionship. You know, with me, I desired that a lot of people that are in the sex industry had relationships that sexually went wrong. And a lot of the women that I know that personally were in the sex industry that are in the sex industry and that are being trafficked right now had a relationship that they were in that was very abusive. So there's a precursor to getting in the sex industry. 
you have to feel some type of way about yourself where you don't feel valuable enough that you show your body naked and you're willing to let people touch you and make money, right? And so as far as the cam people, there's still a gateway for those traffickers to reach you and you start getting pimped on. So, I'm not saying that it can't happen or that it that it yeah. that it, it happens to every single person, but there is a percentage, and we don't know that because no one's ever done a survey, which would be a great research project to find out how many of the the people that are doing cam work actually have a abusive partner in the background or someone that accepts their lifestyle. Because l- let me tell you something: when you keep truths, uh, when you keep secrets, they they and you don't tell the truth, they make you sick. So you always want to have a partner. Wow. Yeah. Someone that, that's going to ride or die with you because you, you feel lonely in this space. Because let's face it, people are perverted. They want to buy stuff online like that. They want to do this. Your body and your soul gets ravaged by that eventually. Your mind does. And I say by body, your mind, because even though they're not touching you, you, you think to yourself, these people are sick. This guy wants me to stick that thing where? Like, or this girl wants me, to, you know, this woman. I mean, it's not, men aren't the only porn, you Addicts, know, consumers, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right. There's women too, and and there's higher percentage of men, of course, but there's there's females as well. So what is right? what, so what is the power for a man and a woman both to to keep their chastity to uh, that 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 it is? Do you see sex as something spiritual? Are there connections that happen when we let stuff like uh, pornography into our eye gates and being around it? Do we open up for more? One thing I do know is that yeah. all of the major serial killers in our in U.S. history were all overly infatuated with with weird porn stuff and it started out something small and bigger and bigger and bigger till they wanted to go out right. and start doing it in real life and in it that's a, a really weird statistic that jeffrey dahmer and all of those guys will will tell you ted that bundy. O- ted bundy over <laughs> oh, yeah. infatuated yep. with so i mean what what is it like the spiritual connection why we shouldn't look at that kind of stuff or you shouldn't open yourself up is there something to be protected is it are we is a piece of us dying every time we do that? What, what's uh, happening spiritually? I I believe, yeah, I believe so. D- do you understand that a lot of the porn, it opens up a portal into, oh, what is that? Oh, wow, my body has power. Oh, you you know, there's something in your, our hormonal activity in our brain and our, in our bodies that turn on something in your genitals, okay? Now, our bodies were designed to love each other, right? I believe God designed sex as a supernatural, not just a physical, but a supernatural yeah, connection. For sure. And what I mean by that is now listen, listen and hear me. We have sex, right? With a man and a woman. I'm not saying woman to woman, man to man. Okay. I'm saying man to woman, or I'm not talking, you know, trans sex, anything like that. I'm talking woman to man where there is a procreation going on. Okay. God designed the man to have the sperm. A woman's designed to have her vulva with her ovaries, okay? What happens when that happens without condoms? That's a man-made thing, by the way. God didn't design condoms. There was no need to design condoms. Guess why? Because we didn't have multiple partners with diseases. That's not God's original design. His original design is Adam and Eve, right? So there's a supernatural act that takes place physically and, I believe, emotionally. Because there's a child that is being made, right? Not every single time, but it can happen where there's a life being created. And I believe that that is sacred. That's a sacred act of showing affection towards each other, of how much you love and care for each other, that a baby. In fact, you want to know something my mom told me? I said, mom, how do you make a baby? And, you know, she looked at me. I was like four years old. And she goes, oh, Annie, you fall in love. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I, I thought I was pregnant when I was four. <laughs> because I, I, I was in love with Captain Kirk on Star Trek. So <laughs> I literally was freaking out thinking I was pregnant. So if a little child can see that in this because I didn't know what sex was when I was four can see that that there is a supernatural something going on yeah. what is really going on yeah it is a supernatural act and when we we cheapen it by selling ourselves 
or sleeping around and it being, you know, exploiting our own selves and not charging for it and just being promiscuous because we just see, cause that's the thing. Sex was designed for intimacy. It's yeah. for that real hardcore soul to soul connection. Okay. And it's a beautiful thing, but when we monetize it, we sell it. I mean, it becomes this terrible exploitation of not just our bodies, but our minds, soul, and spirits, right? We, it, it, I just, you guys, it, we're messing with a lot of stuff. Okay, so let me just share this experience, and then I'll let you ask me some more questions. Okay. When I was in the sex industry, I would wake up in the middle of the night, and I would have this demonic presence in the room. And even right after I got out of the industry and a body, like an invisible body would be holding me down, but trying to have sex with me, mm. like pretty much trying to rape me, but I can't explain it. It kind of felt good in a way. It was weird because my body craved intimacy and I really believe that that was demonic. And when I was having sex with all these different men, I believe I was opening up portals it, it even says in the Bible that when two become one, you two, two people become one, they yeah. become one person. Yeah. So you're, 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 uh, you're becoming one with all these people. So all their demons <laughs> that are oppressing them or possessing them could enter that, that, that gates. Right. So I would wake up sometimes truth and I would look and there would be this demonic black, red-eyed sticky demon in the corner watching me laughing at me when i was being held down it was awful like i literally would get scared to death because i thought i was gonna die yeah and i really believe that that lifestyle that i was living it was a, a, a portal to the demonic realm because the devil loves us to use our flesh the demons love us to just rely on our flesh for everything you know, our power, our sexuality, we can sell it. We can, you know, commodify it. We can make millions. And I did, by the way, my ex trafficker, the first one got a lot of money from me. Okay. When I look back now, no, I mean, I, millions of dollars, like, come on, like what? Like seriously, out of my body being sold and trafficked to the highest bidder. Is, um, is you know it's yeah go being ahead. sold in you know your story and i mean and i know people sell themselves out in many different ways right we're talking the sex industry or committing sin and becoming a slave to sin and those kind of things habitual sins that you can't stop you're selling yourself every day to that how does that tie in with with the idea of selling yourself and the fact that you were bought <clears throat> with a price you were already bought like you're already bought like, and paid for by Christ. Oh, so the that's connection like of that, so good. You know? Of course, because we know and if anyone hasn't read the Bible and if you're not a believer and you don't like whatever, you're not a Christian, that's totally cool. But there's a story in the Bible about Hosea that prophet Hosea was ordered by, by God to marry Gomer. And she was a trafficking victim. She was being sold in the public auction to sell herself. If you look it up, just read the whole story. You'll see what I'm talking about. But God told Hosea to buy, buy Gomer and marry her and have children. Now they don't even know if those kids were really hers, but the bottom line is this. He bought her several times out of slavery. So Hosea is a precursor to Christ. Now, if you look back to, to Rahab, Rahab was in Jericho. Rahab was uh, a woman that had a house of ill repute. She had a, a basically a brothel, right? And the spies were sent into the promised land. I love this story, by the way. And so one of the spies was named Salmon. And in the lineage of Jesus, you know, Salmon actually rescued with the other spy. He hid. She hid them up in the stairs underneath the flats. And when the king came, he was an evil king and said, where are those spies? She said, oh, they went that way. She said, please save my family. So he saved her family and Rahab became an Israelite. Like she literally came into the promised land, was with them and married Salmon and had, you know, it, it's beautiful, right? Boaz, 
<laughs> Come on, somebody. His mother was possibly, we don't know this, but Rahab was under that tyranny of that king and being controlled by him, obviously, the whole town. So was Rahab a trafficking victim? She for sure was a harlot. So for me personally, Jesus, the kinsman redeemer, right? Because Christ came and he was sold for 30 pieces of silver by Judas, of course, to the Pharisees. And so there's that beautiful bought picture of him buying, taking all of our sins, being put on the cross because, you know, I owed somebody. We all owe somebody our wrong choices, our wrongdoings, our sins. And me not understanding that when I was being sold, realizing that he is my kinsman redeemer. When I, you know, that was one of my love bombs that God gave me was the fact that Jesus died on that cross for me and he paid for the price of his life. His life was paid. Now to me, that's real love. I, I nobody can do that. Like no money could make me feel better, but someone's life that blew me away. So the fact that he did that for all of us, for the entire human race, okay, he bought, you know, our freedom with his life is indescribable. It's supernatural. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's like, wow. So yes. That's Am good. I priceless? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Am I bought and paid for now? Absolutely. But Jesus is not a pimp. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who, who, the devil's who, a pimp. Don't, don't be, be yourself. yourself. You didn't coin that phrase, did you? Cause I know that was, no, no, that's from, that's from my, one of my friends. Uh, oh my gosh. What is his name? This is terrible. Just look it up. You guys. He he coined that phrase for a T-shirt years ago. Yeah, I remember it was he, the T-shirts were big. Yeah, I didn't know if you had anything. He's to do a with rapper. Uh, Kaylee? I, I can't. Not Kaylee. Huh? No. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. I I actually got booked at one of his gigs. T-Bone. T-Bone. No, it was uh, 2007, J July 7th, 2007, and I, I I spoke at his event, and and Seven was there. He's a rapper. Oh, Seven. Seven is the OG. I, yeah, I've had, I've had Seven on here. Oh, Seven's legit, dude. I actually, I love actually, Seven. actually run Seven's website. I built his website. Oh, you do? Yeah, he's a good friend <laughs> of mine. Yeah. Ask him about uh, Devils of Pimp Don't Be His Ho. He'll tell you. <laughs> okay. I, I, oh my gosh, I have his number in my phone, but I, I, I don't know that. I, I don't know if he, if he he made it up, but they definitely made shirts too. <laughs> After that, I don't know if he was the originator. Is that what you're saying? You think he was the, he was the first one that did it? Is he did? Okay. I, I, cool. It wasn't Seven. It was it was his friend, but. He, you know, that, that is the truth because the devil is the ultimate pimp, you know, and we don't have to be trafficked by him. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's trafficking us with our wrong choices and our, our bad decisions and using this against us to hold it against us so that mm -hmm. when we face the end of our lives, we're going to be screwed. He comes or, to collect. You know what I mean? He's the collector, That's right? right? The pimp shows up. He's hey, you got my collector. money. You got my money. Yeah. The Bible he, says sin is fun for a season until it's uh -huh. time to collect. Hey, uh, all that stuff That's you're doing, right. I need a, I need a payment. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know. Oh yeah. You got to pay for that. That wasn't free. Yeah. And you pay with your blood. You pay with your life. Yeah. It's deep. The, you know, I, I'm telling you, there's a, there's an old movie that my dad copied for me. It was called the devil and Daniel Webster. Hmm. And that movie scared the, the bejeebies hmm. out of me when I was a little girl, because this man had this, he was really poor and he, he had this man come and show up at his farm. It was during the great depression. And he was like, Hey, um, I can make your harvest work. I can make you really rich. Your wife won't be sick anymore. She'll be healed. If you just sign on this dotted line. And then in seven years, I'm going to come and get your soul. And he was like, okay. Yeah. So he did it. And it, it was crazy because he was prosperous for seven years, but the seven year mark came and the, the devil came to get his soul. And you guys got to see the movie, but he, it's a black and white movie. It's like so old school. He got out of that contract because I, I can't think if it was an angel showed up or Jesus showed up, but he showed up and went to court for him and the devil lost. Wow. It's like, dude, game over. Okay. Game over. If, if we know that in the end we win, the devil cannot win. Okay. And you have to remember that, 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 
Satan was, he, he's an angel. He's a dark angel. He's still an angel. He got thrown from heaven, but he, he's a dark angel. Okay. Now he is damned to the earth, you know, to realm and roam around the earth. And let me tell you something. He makes it very convincing that his style of life is very good and that you should do what you feel. You should have it live YOLO, live your life, live it to the fullest. Just, just consume, 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 you know, until your body can't take it anymore. Yeah. And he will come and be the bone collector. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, if you allow him to take over your life and I've, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it's, Hey man, it's just he, what's going on. He got, he had a deep grip over my life for a very long time. And, uh, Whenever you put yourself before others and you choose yourself, you know, and, and actually when the enemy comes and has you have no boundaries and you give everything away because you are afraid of feeling like you're not loved, you're still being controlled by the demonic. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's an abusive relationship, right? Anytime someone's abusing you like that out of your, your, your own insecurities and your pain from your past, and you're being controlled and manipulated like a puppet on a string, like you are afraid to leave because you're afraid to lose that love or that feeling of being wanted and needed and chosen. And see, what we don't realize is that way back in the day, even though my dad was the way he was, my dad was just so dysfunctional, full of complex trauma, that I just needed to feel loved. And see, when I found out that Jesus loved me, truth, that was it for me. Mm -hmm. When I really found out that he truly loved me, it was like all those chains of exploitation and control and manipulation and people pleasing fell off of me and i was free that's good that's and good. i and i, and I man i'm telling you i have been freed up ever since and i'm not saying i'm perfect that i don't get pulled into things that i don't get i mess my self self up sometimes and i i struggle sometimes and i i yes it, let's keep it 100 i'm keeping it real have i sworn since i've gotten saved absolutely have said the f word Oh, hundreds of times, thousands. I don't even know. Like, have I done things that I wouldn't normally do, you know, and, and chosen some bad things? Yes. But let me tell you, my proclivity to choose the right thing is way stronger than it was to choose the wrong thing. Okay. The, my gate, my spirit woman is alive and well inside of me. She's alive and well. She sees the truth and she knows and she chooses truth over falsities or comfort or nice, you know, painted, sparkly gold lies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to share with everyone because I really want everyone to realize that there is truth out there and you can, if you look, it will appear in the most insane places. You know, things that you would never expect to happen will supernaturally happen to you when you start seeking truth. Signs. God will give you signs left and right. One of the things that he was giving me a lot was I, I kept seeing 1111. Mm. Yeah. That's some of you out there that are watching right now. You've, you've seen that. And you're like, Whoa, Whoa. Like she saw it too. Yeah, I did. What, it, and that's sort of like a spiritual awakening happening. Yeah. Okay. 1111 is a deep, deep dive into a rabbit hole. But for me, I see now, what it really was. God was, God was trying to tap me on the shoulder and go angels all around you, angels all around you. The realm is real. Like yeah. we're watching over you. Yeah. It, yeah. It's so Pay beautiful. Attention. I've, I've, uh, I, I wrote about that in my book and, and I experienced you it. You did? Oh yeah. About 11, 11. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about, Whoa. um, Come synchronicity on. It's you know, it's called synchronicity It's where, yeah. You start awakening to these patterns and these signs around you. Like 11, 11's always been wow. there. 333 has always been there. You just wasn't on that level of consciousness to like know it. And what I've come to find out is like, hey, something or someone is trying to get your attention. And now you're aware of it because you're seeing it. It's almost like fo it's following you everywhere and you're privy to it. And it does represent angelic communication you're being watched over and yes you become yes, lucid, I knew in, that. lucid in this dream Come on. You, you you actually yeah. wake up you wake up in, in a dream while everyone else is asleep Woo. and you're starting to notice these glitches in the matrix mm -hmm. but it's it's god it is the lord who, who's the author and creator of, of 
everything, author and finisher of your faith. So the interesting thing, which I've been talking about, and I'm gonna throw this out there, I don't have to get too deep with it, but it's a th there's levels to it, right? Yes. So maybe so maybe at level four in the spirit, as you wake up and as you 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 know you're faithful and true with the testings and the things the Lord's given you, you kind of move up that ladder, right? Of mm. of uh, being trusted and with more, because if He finds you faithful with few, He'll make you rule over more. So that's another level. Let's just say at, num at level four, there's a level of synchronicity where you begin to see numbers and this this following you. What's going on? Obviously oh, the man. Uh, the uh, the uh, numbers t shift it goes from numbers to stuff on the television stuff on the radio billboards right when you think it you see the billboard that says hey it's time to pray and you knew god was calling you to pray and there's a billboard that shows up and says hey just pray you know there's all kinds of stuff that can happen maybe at level four but for for every level there's a corresponding level of darkness and you mentioned mm. you know in that darkness seeing demons uh, uh, you know, being privy to a realm where you actually see them. Oh Lord, there's oh, demons I've seen looking so through, many. through people. So a lot Truth, of people are I, I, into like, the, the beautiful wow. stuff of the synchronicities yes. and the numbers in God, but they don't understand that at level negative four, there's demonic synchronicities. There's, you know, things about people and you can hear demons speaking to you through them. Cause you said Jesus spoke to you telepathically Man, with love and I light. But the demons and devils you, do the same thing for the negative side, right? I will never forget. I I, I saw a demon, it, it, this demon, it was, it was probably about two feet tall. It, mm. it was red and it ran. It ran from me. It was in my old house and I was praying over it and put an anointing on it. Was probably the first two years I got saved. And I'm telling you, it was like, whoa, it just went out the back door. And another time I was, someone prayed over me and they were, they were like, using witchcraft. I know this wow. sounds, yeah, people can pray and use witchcraft on you and they can claim that they, oh, I believe in God too. Yeah. I'm gonna, and, and they could be casting a spell on you. And let me tell you what I audibly heard from God. I know it was from God. I audibly heard him say to me, witch. He said, witch, this person's a witch, watch it. And lo and behold, that person completely messed me over, tried to tarnish my reputation and tried to completely destroy me. Locked me out of my own house. Mm. Yeah. God tried to warn me. And you know, when you said about the numbers, listen, truth, I'm still seeing numbers. Oh. And I, aces are fine, but I'm, I'm seeing like other things now. Like one of my numbers is 55. I'm seeing that everywhere. And I know double grace. Come on, somebody. Triple grace. Of, sometimes it's five, 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 five. It, sometimes it's four. Let me tell you something. Grace is my name. Annie is a derivative of Hannah, which is Hebrew, and wow. Hannah means grace. That's awesome. So I know that the man, I'm telling you, people, pay attention. God is trying to talk to you. He is trying to, he's trying to give you signs, signals, yeah. wonders, whatever it is. And you just gotta pay attention. And the other thing is, if you don't get that, it doesn't mean he's not real. Okay. You know, there's something called a word of knowledge. Sometimes you know something, and it seems like psychic. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I thought I had psychic powers <laughs> yeah, for a yeah. long time. I, did, I, I was like, I'm psychic. I'm psychic. But really, in all, you know, God yeah. gave me a gift to, mm -hmm. to, to, to read people, to discern. That's called discernment. Mm -hmm. But also, he gave me a gift to know what's about to happen. That's called prophecy. He also gave me a gift of a word of knowledge. I know things about people that are, and I see pictures. And it's so cool because when that starts, when I'm around people that are like that with me, that have that same vibe and that same gift, it starts flowing like a yeah. river. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, yo, this happened. And all of a sudden, I could see. And it just recently happened to me. I was at a conference, and we did this, this thing called Fire Tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I prayed for this lady, and she, um, I saw her covering people with blankets. And she came up to me after. And she's like, I, I, you know, I, you have a word for me, don't you? I said, I do. And, she, and I, I told her, I said, you, I saw you making blankets and covering people, comforting them. And you know what she did? That's what she did. She wow. made homemade blankets. She showed me pictures of like 70 of her blankets. And she was like, this is my ministry. And I was like, whoa. Like, yeah. That was like that's a awesome. God yeah. tap on my, you For know sure. what I mean? That's that's how he works. Like he, you know, that's that's just how the supernatural comes in and God comes in and then just like shows you stuff. 
that you would never know. I know that wasn't on my own doing. I just, he gave me a vision. I was like, whoa. So to move and to breathe in the spiritual realm, the kingdom of God is here and it's real. And if you can tap in and yeah, I, I really recommend for me music and praying and just really centering yourself, not ha- t- turning off your phone, turning off your television, just really trying to see what's inside of you and then emptying everything and asking God to come and speak to you, speak to my mind, speak to my heart, show me something yeah. is a way that I personally connect. Yeah. You know, it's a call, I, a call, I, call to yeah. the secret life. The, uh, you know, the prayer mm-hmm. closet, the prayer chamber, that's where, you know, you, we mentioned intimacy. And this is what happens in the secret chambers. We can get really, this gets really deep. Like God is, mm. our, our anatomy is is a mirror. Of, we are the temple of God. He lives inside right. of us. He, he comes to make his home within us as we make room for him. I'm just going to, I'm not, we're not going to go deep down this, but listen, the secret place, the secret place, the chambers we go in to meet with the father. There's a, there's the idea of secret and secretion. Mm. secretion where you begin you be you're pregnant with the things of god mm-hmm, with the womb mm-hmm. the, the womb god god plants things in in in, in you uh dreams ministries destinies that mm. you you're carrying mm. this this stuff and so you have to cultivate it you're you're given a seed you know and so this definitely ties into the conversation but it is a call to the secret place god wants to draw us away again like you said turn off the television put down our phones and and even if it's just a few minutes to say here i am lord i just want to spend some time with you i don't want anything yeah i got a prayer mm. list i got all i need you to do this i need you to come through i need this my mom is dealing with this so and so but listen i just want to hang out just for a few minutes and listen that's where everything begins to click is in that place of the the secret place of prayer and jesus teaches us how to do it he gives us the model and, uh, he's so good to he's grow so in the good. spirit silence. we have to do that right silence. and i want to yeah. encourage everyone silence is actually a weapon against the enemy mm. he, he 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 doesn't want you to 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 know that okay he wants you to be afraid of the silence and especially us with trauma yes us with deep traumas which a lot of the world is is has experienced trauma now because of yeah. the past couple of years but specifically like he wants us to think that that's a dangerous place to go. Keep everything turned on. Like don't turn off the radio, turn on the music, do that. But, but that place, that centering place that God has created for you inside of yourself, it's there to be tapped into. But not only that, that's a place that you invite him into. Yep. And you, and instead of the, you know, and some of you might be afraid to do it because you've, you've been attacked by demons and you know that the demonic is real and you've been attacked by spirits or whatever it is. But if you invite God into that space, and I would, I would definitely maybe have a prayer partner or, uh, you know, whoever can, can walk with you in doing that. And I would definitely be making sure that you're not, you know, doing like, uh, gosh, how do I say it the right way, truth? That we're not trying to do a cultic activity where you're trying to get in touch with someone that passed on like don't do that just try to just be in touch with you know with the center of who created you yeah. god's heart his heart of the father he he loves you he wants to meet with you he wants to know you he wants you to know his son like his son that died and shed his blood for all of us became a human. So that's why this God is a supernatural God that became human. It's so beautiful that he would come into the form of a human and try to, you know, show us what it was like to live as a human yeah. supernaturally. That's cool. Right. And, and he walked on this earth. They said they don't even know how many miracles actually were done. Okay, we'll never know until we see his face. And maybe we might not even know then because they're incountable. Yeah. But what I do know is this says that when I encountered Jesus, when I encountered God's love, nothing was like it. Nothing that I uh, that I've ever felt. I've been to Buddhist temples. I've been I've done Wiccan 
certain stuff. I've experimented with different belief systems, but this was far, it, this far surpassed any supernatural experience I've ever had in my life was encountering that overdose and seeing myself in a coffin, having a near death experience and then realizing, holy beep, Jesus is real. That's wow. It. Yeah, He's real. <laughs> the story of the gospel is that he came to he he came to us in our brokenness. He came to us in our sin. And so what you're doing with your ministry, you know, is your goal, you're doing what Jesus did for you. You're paying it forward. Listen, I don't turn my nose up at you and say, Hey, get yourself together, then you can come to our church. Get yourself together and then Jesus will accept you. No, he already loves you with an everlasting love and, and stepping down into that place where people are broken people are hurting i mean that's the gospel christ did that god did come that on. for us through christ come on and come uh, on i want to say something lazarus never he didn't take off his clothes did he mm. he walked out of that grave and jesus said remove his grave clothes yeah that's good if god wants to take them off my arms are open it's not my responsibility completely to take these off. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for each other for. Yes. Help somebody help us take these off. These old mindsets, these old masks that we wear, our grave clothes can be anything. Our love of relationships, our love of money, our love of being the number one person, our competition spirit, everything, you know, our fears, all that, those are old grave clothes. If we allow God to just take those off of us and put on the new nature that we are, because we're new now. That's as it. soon as you, as soon as you surrender, He's like, no, no. He'll give you There's beauty no, for ashes. Take that's away right. That There's shame. no, uh, like, dude, like seriously, like some of us would be like, well, I got this issue, and well, listen, we're in our bodies. Our, our, you know, our, our salvations are, are fought for with fear and trembling right i mean we we just know that in our if our mind's made up we're there i don't care what you see in the natural or feel even i want to encourage everyone out there that's that's seeking god right now you don't have to be feel perfect that everything's finished to to know that it is because because if you just know that it is without feeling it you're already in that right direction yeah so trusting wow. him walking through walking through the door he opens for you you know and sometimes we feel like we're trying to beat the door down but just if you, we just surrender you know faith is as little as a mustard seed that you have to have like if you just have just well i wonder if god is real real if, if even, even if your faith seed could literally be you just pray and ask him to reveal himself to you it's that easy that's it See, that's the thing that's that, that I love about Christianity or about Christ and God is that he makes it simple, mm. makes it really simple so that anybody can get it no matter where you are. Listen, if you're a deep, complex person, he'll meet you there, too. But he makes yes. it simple for everyone. He knows the desires of our hearts. He knows what we're dealing with. And he comes down right. again from this high and mighty throne to where we are to say, hey, man, what's going on? What's happening? It's good. You okay? And listen, he it's does that. so good. He did that for me in 1998. He did it again in 2000. But guess what? He does it every single day. You good, bro? Mm. You good? Truth. You good, man? You need anything? Can I help you? You want to talk? You need to get some stuff off your chest? Every There's nothing more spiritual. And uh, it's so easy. It's just literally, like we said, close the door. Close your eyes, whatever. And just talk. Just start talking to to Christ, start talking to God. And mm. uh, man, I, I, I bid you to to try it out, taste and see that the Lord is good, man. This is a, a person's story, Annie, who's who's uh you know given her life over to this because there, there's something real in it. Somebody who's been searching all of their lives, just like all of us are. We're all searching, but how easy it is for us to come and sit at his feet. So good. Annie, um, I know you got yeah. some more stuff you want to share, but I want to know if you can pray specifically for for men who have opened up the doors to spirits and for things unknown through pornography, for people to be forgiven mm. and their minds cleansed, if you can meet them, but also 
also women who have opened up their bodies and opened up their mind as well and they mm. feel shame and guilt and <laughs> and uh, a second chance or a 70th chance you know 70th time to- 70 oh. times seven man his goodness if uh yeah and i'll agree with you look I'm, I'm i'm right now i'm feeling it for everyone that's watching right now and listening because i i i i, I see where you are and the good news is is that you're not too far gone you are never ever too far gone see god is a father he is a father to the orphan to the widows but also to the addicts he's he's a father and let me let me just say right now that maybe that addiction that happened to you or what you're doing right now is because you're doing it out of a place of emptiness and out of brokenness and out of pain and out of something that happened to you when you were very little or recently or a bad relationship happened and let me tell you that god is able to meet you just like truth said right where you're at and lord i just i'm gonna pray father you are you are the father to the addict lord you are the father to someone that is seeking and we all know that that intimacy that my friends are seeking right now people that are listening right now that is is it, 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 it it's a it's a seeking lord of of just lord a lack of love there's an intimacy that's going on that they want so desperately they're missing something and so i ask right now by the power of your your goodness and your holiness that you would just come in and interrupt the enemy interrupt the plans of the demonic interrupt the plans of the dark side that you would speak truth to them that you would do a revealing of your love and your forgiveness and your acceptance and your grace on their life and your mercy lord i just ask that you would reveal that to them and i pray right now that they that there would be courage put inside of their hearts to face the truth of the reality lord the reality of where what they're doing has gotten them and that the road that they're going down is not a road of prosperity or light it's a road of darkness and i thank you right now god that you are the revealer of truth and i thank you right now that jesus mm. that lord you came for people just like me you came for people just like truth you came for people that are just addicted and there is no shame that can separate them from you and your love no no regret no uh worry anxiety can separate you from lord from the love that you have for them and so i just thank you right now that you're revealing that to them and i pray right now i pray a release a release of the chains a breaking a cutting off of the chains of the enemy a cutting off of addictions a cutting off of desires to meet unholy things in in the middle lord and i thank you right now that you have set them free right now in the name of jesus you are setting them free in jesus name amen mm. amen 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord, for uh, for grace and peace coming into our lives. Even now, you know, the areas yes. that we need it. We need healing. We need light. We yes, need love. Lord. And we know that light and love is the person of Jesus Christ. God, we ask yes. you to come into our lives. Lord, change Thank us. You. Thank yes, you for your God. love. Thank you for your peace right now. Healing hearts. God, bringing forth restoration. Any area where somebody just needs needs a touch right now, whoever it is, you know exactly the thing that they've been wrestling with. Key word is wrestling. Annie said two words earlier. She said regret and remorse that she had. She knew she had regret and remorse. That's what it takes. Somebody who's wrestling with that regret and remorse. God, I just pray in the midst of that, you bring forth restoration, bring forth rest. Yes, yes. Take their burdens, God. Give them peace and rest Mm. right now. In Jesus' mighty name, God, I thank you that today is a day of new beginnings. 
that you don't yes. hold our past Brand new. against us. You don't hold our shame yes. against us right now. Anybody struggling, peace be upon their lives right now in Jesus yes. mighty name. We thank yes. you. We thank you. Thank you. God, you come to make all things new. All yes, Lord. things new. Second mm. chances, third and fourth, fifth mm. chances, 20th chances. God, mm. we thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for your love and your grace that is married yes. to us to see us through. In Jesus' mm. mighty name, amen and amen. Wow. You, you are a new creation. New creation. Just like Truth said, second, third, fourth, fiftieth chances, you're a new creation. Every day is nurse, yes. his mercies are new. Just, you need to believe that. I don't care what your mind is telling you right now, the enemy's coming against you. This is real. Yes. What just happened is real. You, you just got released into glory right now. You got released into his grace and his glory and his love. Receive it. Just open up your arms and hands and just receive it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Let us know in the comment section. Let us know what, what do you feel? What is God doing in your life? What is God doing in your heart? And uh, we just pray for healing. And, and everyone, I see this prayer request here. Bach Bowman, the Lord sees you. He says, my dad's on a ventilator. Prayers over his lungs and whole body from head to toe in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. Isaiah 53, 5, by his mm. stripes, he is healed. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, Jesus. Whatever you need, just you just have to open that door. Allow him to come in. He's a gentleman. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If you just open the door and let him in. I know you're scared because you got skeletons. There's demons in the closet. There's things you're ashamed of. Listen, let him in. Let him in. Yeah. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him into he, that, that secret place, guys. He's not afraid of those demons. No. Not afraid of those demons. That's good. Let light come in. Let truth yeah, come let in. Yeah, let light come in. That's right. You're 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 not a you're not a has been or a used up person. You are brand new again. Brand new. And 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 his love is and I I wanted to say this earlier. I felt I felt like the spirit say to me to tell me uh, to tell everyone out there. His love is eternal. It never ends. It's never ended. It's always been. It's here forever. All we need to do is learn how to tap into it tap into his love tap into his forgiveness and grace and peace and mercy and just you know benevolence just everything that he is he, he's here he's present he loves you mm -hmm. just the way you are Amen. just the way you are gentle he's gentle he's a gentleman not gonna force you he, he, he's looking for your heart to look to him he wants your heart it's all he wants. He wants your heart. Yeah. So good. So good. So good. Andy, thank you for coming on, sharing You're your welcome. story, getting able to being able to pick your brain. We could talk for hours. There's so much more that I love to connect with. Oh, you there's about. a part two to, coming for real. Let's do part it. Two, I'm, let's go. I'm open. I'm open. I got so many more questions, and <laughs> and and now that we got your testimony out of the way, we can we can tackle so many more subjects, and I, I definitely look forward to doing that with you as well. Yeah. Um, for sure. So good. Um, just before we go, I guess one last question, you know, uh, with the Trump administration, right? There was a lot of light and a lot of talk about sex trafficking. Like this yes. became a, a big deal. A lot of people who yeah. who were in the dark on this stuff, it became a reality and it was overwhelming. And and uh, can, can you speak to that, that illumination that, that came? And obviously there was a lot of disinformation with it, but I think yes. that light was brought to a lot of areas that people didn't know existed. Can you speak to that whole thing that happened the last Absolutely. four years or so? Oh yeah. So Jeffrey Epstein during that four year stint got arrested. We all know that. And then he committed suicide. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he was a major, major trafficker of children and young girls. And so he had a ring going on for decades with his Jeffrey Epstein Island. Now Trump, I know for a fact, uh, compared to uh, President Obama prior and other presidents, he did the most work in the White House for trafficking exposure and new laws that were presented and passed and funding as well. So the Trump era, with the light that was being shined on that, 
as far as the children being trafficked and just even females that were 18 and older and males that were 18 and older being trafficked, not just in the United States, but across the world, the heightened awareness of it, it, it reached a new realm, like a, a realm of awakening, I believe. And I've never seen so many organizations formed and come to the same agreement about stopping trafficking as the past four years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I, I it was, it, it, let me tell you something. Um, it's a good time for the revealing of that. And it's only going to get better. This is what we have to pray and hope for. So uh, trafficking is uh, definitely now it's uh, not just uh, a, a couple stories here and there. It's everywhere. Yeah. Like, and we need to keep our eyes open because we all know that there's disinformation out there. And there's current stories even going on right now that they're trying to cover up and say that that person wasn't a trafficker or that person wasn't violent. But there's stories right now in the news. I don't want to say what they are, but they're trying to cover up the tracks of the trafficking. Yeah. So we need to be the light. We, If we see something, we need to say something. If we mm. suspect it, hey, call the human trafficking hotline right away. You can even call us too, 702 883 Five one five five. That's our hotline. Good stuff. Good we help. Stuff. We help them get out. We have a home called Destiny House, and uh, for people that have been trafficked, and it's a long-term program. It's free of charge, and uh, yeah, people are getting massively blessed in our program right now. So, is there is there yeah. a number that you guys may have, or a ballpark of how many women that you guys have helped get off the streets in, in, because of your ministry? Oh, okay. Thousands. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I think the last time we estimated it as far, because I can't even count truth, all the people that we met online and that we helped from afar yeah, as well. For sure. And places I've spoken at where people actually got out because I spoke the truth and they, they were like, oh my gosh, I'm being trafficked. I didn't know I was being trafficked or my friends being trafficked. So yeah, a, a low estimate, 5,000. Maybe one that's an uncounted one would be more like 10, 20,000. Like it's a lot of, a lot of people, uh, so awesome. many, many, many people. And, and maybe more, I'm not even sure. Yeah, for sure. For you sure. know, it's, it's really, you know, it all started with an outreach on the strip where I used to work. I'd go down and I'd just invite them to come have coffee with me and, and have a conversation. And we'd sit in a chair. That's where pink chair comes from. You know, a, yeah. a conversation, a chair, a change. You know, it, it just the change would happen in their hearts because hey, they saw my listen, story. This is what we're doing yeah. on this podcast. I'm having people That's on right. to sit down in a chair. Listen. That's right. You, and when you when you talk to someone, you get to know them. You understand their geome and their background. And you, you, you don't have any right to judge them, first of all. Number two, when you share each other's stories and each other's pain and hurts and each other's triumphs, you bless each other. You You, yeah. you can help someone come out of that darkness that they're in. And so you can let them know, hey, I'm in the light now. This is how it really is. You're in darkness. Let me pull you out of that. Are you ready to come? Take my hand. Yeah. We don't force it, by the way. Mm -hmm. We don't force any of our beliefs on anyone. We're very respectful. And uh, we've, we've helped a lot of people. I love, love doing this and bringing the truth to people that need to know that they're loved, that they're set apart, that they're absolutely chosen by God, and that there's visions and dreams that God has given them that he wants to fulfill in them to to allow that perfect destiny that God has for them from the very beginning of their creation and their mother's womb so good. yeah so good that's what we do that's what we do at destiny uh, House. Hook, it's uh hookersforjesus.net yes like I will put the link or or you yep and you can put <laughs> pinkchair.com too yeah. pinkchair.com goes to the same thing I have a show too it's a t television show and awesome. it's called pinkchair.com Annie's pink chair so awesome, come check awesome. us out. We're on uh, local Las Vegas station 17 and we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee and recently uh, Orla all of Orlando, Florida on the Super Channel. Wow. Yeah. Heck yeah. So it's really cool. So good. So yeah. Good. Awesome. Awesome. One last question before we go. I seen Striper a couple of years ago. They came through. How's, how's your husband? How, how's his health doing? How is he? He's doing good. He is actually, he just left. He went to go meet with his friend. Rocky from Chaotic Resemblance. He's the father of this wonderful band that you will love. Look it up. Chaotic Resemblance, completely talented. He produced one of their first albums, my husband did. So he's out with the, them for breakfast right now. And he's doing good. I mean, he's recovering still. 
he's had two brain surgeries so you got to kind of figure it's got a little bit of recovery time with that but he's uh getting ready to work on a new album with striper next year and play and get hit the road again and yeah founding the original member Heck he yeah. is my Oz truth okay <laughs> Heck yeah he landed in Oz. man <laughs> god is good right like seriously so good, so good. yeah Thank you so, for coming on, Annie. Let me know anytime you want to do this you're again. You're welcome. I, I love Yeah, to, sounds love to do good. It. All right, Truth. All God right, my bless friend. And everyone out there, you are loved. Peace out. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Okay. Annie Lobear, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you you check her out, man. Her her ministry and her reach, and uh, it does go far. It does go wide. She, um, like I said, I remember seeing her on the early days of like TBN, Christian television, and seeing her with uh, uh, Joyce Myers. She's, Joyce Meyer had her come up and, and share and praise the Lord on, on TBN in, in those early days. And she stood out because her branding, her hair, man, and her story, you know. And uh, I just, I just want to say this, that I, I've been using that term a lot, you know, talking about the prostitutes, you know, and just because it's so easy to uh, to feel like that's somebody else. Oh, that's Annie. Annie was a prostitute. Oh, yeah, she got a radical ministry to go to the prostitutes because she was one, right? You know, and there's this this idea that that we like to just push that off as it's somebody else or someone else. You know, the you know the uh, the lepers or the paraplegic or the man with the withered hand in the Bible, right? And all of that. Listen, it there's. Those stories are for and about us. You got to understand that that you've been you've been or if not are the person who has been looked over you or, or has been selling yourself. Because, listen, anytime you don't own your truth, you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself short in every area. Physically, as a prostitute, for sure. If that's your story, you're going to get it spiritually a prostitute. Like, that's a whole nother thing. The scriptures, like this Bible talks about God being married to us. And then how we go around seeking other lovers spiritually, dealing with idolatry. And it says God is a jealous God. Listen, he's, he's madly in love with us. So to see us sell ourselves and be married, come on. Like if you had a, a situation where you're husband or wife was doing that physically it's crazy spiritually how we sell ourselves anytime we we don't live our truths anytime we hide our light under a lampstand sell ourselves short every day own your truths man be the person that God has created you to be has called you to be without shame without animosity because God has taken that shame upon himself we're married to him through Christ through the light through the love it's huge it's huge so um, see yourself in those people don't look at it like it's somebody else that yeah they they were a prostitute in the Bible because I don't really don't identify with that like uh, you know but when I look at it in another term as far as who he's willing to to give grace at this point I can see myself in that I see myself in the prostitute I see myself in the person with the withered hand with the lepers the, pe the people that were outcasts of society the people that the Pharisees and the others looked over the people who were demonically possessed if anything look at it as the person who's been forgiven and when Jesus comes into confrontation with the prostitute in, in one situation, everybody's getting ready to stone her and kill her. And Jesus says, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Let's stone her. If we're living up to this standard that you're trying to force on other people. Listen, we talked about the religious spirit. We talked about the Pharisees. That Pharisee spirit, religious spirit is trying to hold people up to a standard that they don't even hold themselves up to. And Jesus showed that. Like, Jesus showed the fact that 
the Pharisees who were ready to stone, ready to degrade, ready to judge, ready to kill. They're projecting. Listen, when you throw a stone, you're projecting. You're projecting ideas and judgments on people that you don't even hold yourself to. For those who have dealt with the religious spirit, the Pharisee spirit, you know what that feels like. And we all have. That's our story. That's just not about some random prostitute. No, it's about you. It's about your heart. It's about what you've went through. It's about what you're carrying. Listen, woman, where are your accusers? Because they threw the stones down. It says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone, which is like, hey, let's let's stone her. If that's what you guys want to do, let's do it. But the scripture says that whoever's going to cast judgment has to be one who is without judgment. So you're trying to kill the same woman, the same people for committing the same things that you that you're doing. Or the same things that you've done. That's my story. I, I can see myself in that. Make it real. Make it powerful. It's about you. He wants to speak to your heart through it all. Let him. Let him. He's in that, man. Thank you, God, for your grace and your peace that even though we, we've sold ourselves short, we sell ourselves every day by not owning our truth, by by cheating on on you with with other ideas and idolatry and becoming infatuated with the things of this world it's idolatry man it's not here to help you it's not here to serve you it's here to rob steal and kill from you just like the pimps again thank you for your forgiveness for your peace right now let it wash over each and every person listening peace where are your accusers because these were people who stood, who so-called stood in this on the seat of God. They were claiming to speak for God, casting judgment, casting stones and crises. No, listen. I speak for the Father. Peace, love, grace, and understanding. Just know that, man. That's you. He loves you so much with an everlasting love. Do not let anyone talk you out of that. Don't let anyone take that from you. Know who you are. Know whose you are. You were bought with a price. I was bought so a price so I can't be sold. Listen, I'm already purchased with the eternal precious blood. Sacred, holy, set apart, loved. So good. You got to do enough to talk gotta do another talk with annie i got so many questions man she dropped a lot of knowledge i loved how her face lit up when we spoke about synchronicity 11 11 what oh you've seen it too yeah you know so good you wrote about it in your book yeah i did it's a very huge part of my life and many of you you guys are here i have a song called synchronicity and a lot of people are here because they found that song how did they find the song it's because they're googling synchronicity they're googling what does 11 11 mean and they're finding my music and finding the podcast all things work together for the good of those who love god god uses everything and he's using rap music and podcast and people like me and people like you people like annie to be a light into the darkness you know a lot of those people in the you know Christian realm and church, they, they look at what Annie does as something special. Even like what I do, they look at this as like, oh, you got to be a special person to do what you do. No, you just got to have light. You just got to have compassion. And that compassion will lead you to where you need to go. And yeah, hopefully it's a place where it's unvisited, unreached. Hopefully. Because they look at it as something big and grandiose, but no, it's simple. Go back to where you were when he found you. And that's what Annie did. So good. You got to get cleaned up. You got to get prepared, but not. It's not as hard as you think. 
Sometimes you need to come out of it for a season, years. That season could be years. Sometimes it could be instant, instantly. When Jesus healed people and he dealt with people, there were some times where he said, now go back to them and tell them what I did. Other times he said, listen, don't go back to that place. Like, they're ready for you. Like, they're going to destroy you if you go back. Go to your home. Don't go back to that town which I called you out from. Go back home. Take some time. Get ready. News is going to sh- catch. They're going to find out. You're not You're not showing up, right? But it's to be built up, to be sent back out with your story and with your love and with your light back into the dark places. It's everywhere. Let your light shine so they may see your good works and that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Hope you all enjoyed this talk. I did. Her story is amazing. Amazing to be able to talk to her and pick her brain and Really good stuff. I appreciate her, her ministry. Her husband, if you guys didn't catch that, is uh, Oz Fox from uh, the band Striper, one of the first Christian metal bands. They were huge back in the day. They were the only ones. And uh, they would throw Bibles out at their concerts and stuff and play with like huge bands like Ozzy and stuff like that. And um, really cool stuff. So they're still doing it and they're still still out there doing it. So it'd be cool to have him on too, pick his brain. Um, with that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I really did. And we'll do this again very soon. Peace, peace, everyone. Shalom. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.